Under cover of darkness, those living in the greater Toronto area are routinely terrorized by nocturnal raiders. These vandals are relentless and insatiable. They arrive late at night or in the wee hours of the morning. They take what isn't theirs, although their bounty is worthless. In fact, it's literally garbage. But it is the messy aftermath they leave behind that has so many people in the Hogtown area fuming these days. Welcome to life in Toronto, a city that has become an urban haven for a pest that is out of control, the ravenous raccoon. How big is Toronto's raccoon problem? Well, it's actually become an election issue. We have an issue with them and I met with some people um, just the other day down on Avenue Road about raccoons. And they said, Rob, it's out of control. They're ripping apart. They're into our roofs. They're... We have to do something with them. I don't want them attacking anybody. Um, and uh, raccoons are a problem in the city. We have to think of something, um, a different way maybe. Sterilization? Uh, <laughs> sterilization. <laughs> no. Well, I'm with John Pepper, and this is a beautiful home in, on Edenbrook Drive in Etobicoke. And, uh, uh, much like the biblical Garden of Eden, it's gorgeous to look at, but John, you've had some intruders recently, haven't you? Raccoons. Mm. Now this is one that's just being trapped. Uh, we had one here the, on Saturday, and uh, what happened to him is he rolled over around in the crate, fell into the pond, and proceeded to drown himself. Mm. So this but, wasn't an intentional uh, kind of thing? This no, was, no, that this was an accident, just okay. by nature. But the real problem is not the raccoon, the real problem is the city. The city changed the garbage to once a week. They brought in that green bin. We have more raccoons here than what they have moose in Newfoundland. Mm. And indeed, in some of the city's recommendations, for example, uh, on the website, it states that perhaps people should keep their green bin and their garbage cans uh, in their basement until garbage pickup day. Right. I mean, is that feasible? Well, I don't think so. I mean, you've got to deal with the smell, and then I'll be getting the rats, rats and the mice mm. in the house and having to have the exterminator come all the time. I'm here at the Ontario Ministry of Natural Resources in Toronto, and although we could not get a Ministry of Natural Resources spokesperson on camera, we were told in a phone interview that a homeowner can indeed kill a raccoon as long as the killing is done in a humane fashion. However, when we asked the ministry to define humane, we didn't get an answer to that question. We spoke to the Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals. They deferred our calls to the Ontario Veterinary College and a spokesperson there said that lethal injection is indeed the most humane way to put an animal down. However, the drugs used in a lethal injection, they aren't available at your local pharmacy. So at the end of the day, can you say catch 22? I'm with Derek McChesney, and Derek is the owner of SWAT Wildlife. And uh, Derek, you've been in business for eight years. I take it in uh, the raccoon capital of the world, business is very good for you. Business is excellent, actually. Yeah, yeah, we can't complain about that. Um, yeah, raccoon nation, as they like to call it, city of Toronto. I mean, there are solutions that I think that could help out the city uh, as a whole, which would be kind of keeping the population down by doing like what they do with dogs and cats is spay and neuter them. But it seems like a bizarre policy, this one kilometer limit, because aren't you just in effect transporting the raccoon problem to somebody else's house? Absolutely. You're taking it literally from one person's backyard to another person's backyard and you're just dumping a problem on somebody else. So it's, it's just not an effective uh, preventative way to, to deal with the animals. So until the city or the province comes up with something, I mean, we're kind of caught between a rock and a hard place as, as the business. Well, it's the day before garbage collection in this part of Toronto, and we're about to put in the garbage can a couple of what I would call raccoon delicacies. First of all, we have deep fried chicken wing bones. That's pretty much irresistible for, for raccoons. And the piece de la resistance, folks, a lobster. Raccoons go crazy for shellfish for some reason. That's going in the garbage too. How much you want to bet that as soon as nightfall takes lease, the raccoons will be out in droves.
Well, the Toronto raccoon is so problematic, many Torontonians, like Blair Johnson here, who lives out in the East End, has become very creative when it comes to securing their garbage from these nocturnal raiders. You've enhanced the uh, clip lock here mechanism with the bungee cord with more force, but the real trick is this bungee so that if they climb on it, and you've seen them do that, they can't knock it down, it just bounces, correct? Exactly, that's exactly the methodology applied here. So it's similar to uh, when you're out camping, just hanging it from a tree. So this is from that concept. You can hear the shrieks. There's a lot of raccoons in this neighborhood, is there not? Absolutely, constantly. You've said almost six years, this has been successful. Sounds like a business opportunity to me, Blair. Could be for somebody out there, but uh, we just wanted to stop the nonsense of the garbage being knocked over here, so. Great, well, congratulations. You've succeeded where so many others have failed, Blair. Thank you. These days in Toronto, a perfect storm exists for raccoons. With virtually no predators and a smorgasbord of delectable garbage, Toronto's raccoons are living longer, getting larger, and giving birth to bigger litters. Indeed, Toronto is now basically waving the white flag of surrender when it comes to controlling the raccoon population, noting that coexistence is the only way to deal with these animals. According to the city's official website, by learning how to share the environment with them and reducing conflict by eliminating sources of food and shelter on our properties, we can be entertained by catching a glimpse of these visitors. But if cities can control their rat and mice and cat and dog population by euthanasia, they should be able to do the same for raccoons, especially since raccoons can be more of a potential health issue than the occasional stray cat. Indeed, surely with their population now in the six figures, this is the time to put an end to raccoon nation. Cities have culled their Canada goose population in the past. What's stopping us from at least trying to control Toronto's insatiable nocturnal raiders. For Sun News Network, I'm David Menzies.